It's been quite a few years since I bought my first laptop and that is this Sony Vio. And as PCs get enhanced and become more powerful every year after year, I decided to build a PC for myself and from the looks of it, I'm sure you can notice my Weapon X is a beast. What is up guys, Sky here back with another video. Before I proceed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and be among the first to watch my reviews and latest tech news updates. The budget for my PC build was around 80,000 rupees or around 1200 US dollars. So I went with the following parts. Please note that I have listed the links of all the mentioned parts below in the description. For motherboard, I chose the MSI H270 PC Mate, which is an ATX form factor board. I didn't go for the Z270 cause I figured out I won't be involved in overclocking and stuff. Further, a processor like the i7-7700K would require much more than a stock cooler, that is, a liquid cooler. The PC Mate costed me Rs. 11,000. It has an LGA 1151 socket, supports up to 2400 MHz of DDR4 RAM, is ready for Intel's Optane technology and even has USB 3.1 Type-C port. Unfortunately, it does not have SLI support but it does have AMD's Crossfire support with a reinforced PCI Express slot. In terms of aesthetics, the shiny grey outline looks dope on metallic black body. It also has a yellow colored LED strip running below its I.O. port. For the processor, I went for Intel's i7-7700. This costed me Rs 24,000 and not to mention it's currently the best 7th gen non-overclockable processor by Intel. Now I could have opted for Ryzen 1700, but the 7700 has slightly better performance in single core as well as multi core. Although the Ryzen 1700 has two times more cores, it does not have official support here in India at least. With only 65 watts of TDP and 8 megabytes of smart cache, its base frequency is 3.6 GHz and its turbo frequency is 4.2 GHz. For the CPU cooler, I went with Cooler Masters Hyper 212X. This costed me Rs. 3300. It is the successor of much touted Hyper 212 Evo, with better blades, a better radiator with X vents design, and V shaped fins which in turn improves the overall airflow. It is compatible with wide range of Intel as well as AMD sockets and I must say it is quite silent. And under normal load, it always manages to keep the CPU under 40 degrees Celsius. For the RAM, I went with G-Skill Ripjaws 5. These are two DDR4 sticks of 8 GB each with 2400 MHz frequency. Now, anything above 2133 MHz is considered for XMP, which means unless your motherboard supports XMP boost, you cannot actually make use of that extra MHz. Thankfully, my H270 PC Mate does support XMP boost up to 2400 MHz. These RAM sticks costed me Rs. 9000. Next up is the power supply unit. I chose the gold rated Corsair RM650X. This PSU, as the name suggests, is of 650 watts, which is enough for all these components plus a GTX 1080. It's fully modular, so I don't have to worry about shoving extra cables in the back of my cabinet. Plus, it's so silent that the fan won't even spin at low loads, and it has a freaking 10 year warranty. What else can you ask from a PSU? This again costed me Rs 10,000. For storage, I am going with a 2TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive. It is a 7200 RPM drive and it costed me Rs 5500. For my primary disk drive, I am going with a Samsung 250GB EVO SSD. This is so freaking fast that if you have never used an SSD before, it would blow your brains out. It has a read speed up to 540 megabytes per second and write speed up to 520 megabytes per second. This costed me Rs 7000. For the case, I am going with Corsair Spec Alpha, which costed me Rs 5500. This bad boy was launched in CES 2016 and is one of a kind in terms of aesthetics. 
It has room for 5 fans, 2 in the front, 2 at the top and 1 at the back. It can also support a liquid cooler with a 240mm radiator, for instance Corsair's H100i. It's a mid-tower case which even has a fan controller at the front panel. Now you might notice that it lacks the space for DVD drives and that's purely intentional, giving it extra room for fans and radiators. The elevated body helps in maintaining proper airflow and the side window panels are little bulged out thus giving some extra room for a tall CPU cooler like Hyper 212X. Additionally, I am also throwing a TP-Link WN781ND wireless adapter because although the MSI PC Mate has an Intel's LAN adapter, it lacks an inbuilt Wi-Fi adapter. This is a 150 Mbps 802.11N PCI Express adapter, which costed me around Rs. 850. I was not able to get my hands on on a graphics card, especially the GTX 1070 and because of Bitcoin and Ethereum mining, they are currently way overpriced. Moreover, I am not playing any games as of now. My primary purpose to build this rig is to edit videos. It took me quite a while to get it done since this was my first time, but the results are worth it. I got a 5181 score on single core performance and 16907 on multi core performance on Geekbench 4. More RAM and more cores will also help me in my virtualization tasks in VMware Workstation and with this, I now join the PC master race. You will have to excuse me for my cable management here. Speaking of cable management, the Corsair Spec Alpha and the Corsair RM650X both come with ample amount of zip ties, so you don't have to worry about ordering some extra zip ties. Finally, I can now focus more on creating better quality content and worry less about rendering times and huge video files. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on my new build. Please hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you soon. Peace.